Hi everyone, Moulton here. Welcome back to our series on pawn formations. So we continue on from the King's Indian in the previous video and we're going to be looking at another popular pawn structure which is reached from this opening and that is called the Rouser pawn structure. And it looks something like this. So it's almost symmetrical as you can see. The only difference being that black has pushed the pawn to c6 and white has pushed the pawn already committing it to c4. So the only downside for white is that he often weakens this d4 square quite a bit. But in return, he's going to have a little bit more space and sometimes the opportunity to push the pawn further to c5 and perhaps look to develop some initiative by you know hopping a knight to this d6 square later as we shall see. So uh, stick around to the end of the video and we'll have a look at all the different plans from both sides with a couple of different examples on how to play it. Um, as always, if you learned something from the video, do feel free to leave a comment down below and like and subscribe if you want to see more regular content. Um, otherwise, we'll jump straight into the video and I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so let's get started on the rouser. So just take a snapshot, mental snapshot of this pawn structure in your head. So when we reach it, um, you can be familiar with it. So a popular way to reach this is from some sort of Indian type of opening, like an old Indian or Queen's Indian or King's Indian. More often the King's Indian, I would say. For example, this is a popular way of reaching it where when you play e5, white will capture on the e5 square and then black will recapture back. Okay, in this particular game, white played the move bishop to g5, um, black played the move pawn to h6 to chase the bishop away. And then black played move pawn to c6 here to reach this pawn structure. Also, it controls the d5 square from the knight, so there's no knight to d5 to put pressure on this pin. There are some downsides, um, as I mentioned, like the d6 square is a little bit weak, but actually um, we see that black is able to cover this square sometimes quite easily by dropping the bishop back to f8. It's more so a problem if white is able to maneuver a knight into that square. So I would say it's more beneficial for white to try to play c5 and knight d2, knight c4, knight d6. This would be the plan I would opt for as white. Okay, we have to move queen to d6. We have to move rook to e8. Uh, the rook goes across to d1 and black plays the move queen to b6. This queen looks annoying, and it is, but it will be chased away, as I said, with the move bishop to f8 at some point. Bishop to f8 comes, and here we have the move knight to h5. So similar to how we play a king's Indian type of position, that the knight will often head towards this square on f4. And actually, this square on d4 is one of the key squares in this particular structure. So we'll see a lot of knight maneuvering to try and reach this particular square on d4 because this is a good outpost this is a good square for the knight to get to so queen c2 is played with the move knight to c5 rook to e1 and then again we see the move knight to e6 so we see some maneuvering here with the knight to try and reach knight to d4 now this knight sometimes can go via f8 as well to e6 to d4 uh, there's a tactic here. Uh, it looks like black is dropping the pawn on on e5, but in fact black has the move knight to d4 here, attacking the queen and attacking the bishop and also attacking the knight. So for example, if, if white tries to save the queen, then we can capture here the knight on e5. So I think this is um, black's idea in this particular position. So the bishop to f1 was played, black played the move knight to f4, this knight to f4. I mean, preferably he wants to put this knight on f4 and this knight on d4, but he was unable to do that right away because I think white can just capture it and he didn't want to end up with the pawn on that square. So we have the move queen to a5 here after knight a4, pawn to c4, c5. So here, finally, I see white is trying to get this move in and trying to get this c4 square for some of his pieces. 
maybe looking to maneuver the bishop or the knight to this square later on. Okay, bishop to g4. Okay, so black's plan in this position is basically to trade off all the pieces which control d4 and eventually try to maneuver the knight into this square. Um, that is black's main objective here. Knight e6. And here after rook c1 is also all, already a mistake, but there was no way to defend the c5 pawn because black already started putting pressure on it. But it allows the move bishop takes f3 because rook takes here runs into knight to d4. And the queen and rook are being attacked and white loses some material so pawn takes is necessary but now the pawn structure is ruined for white and black is able to make use of both of these squares for his knights like f4 and d4 so trading off the dark squared bishops here is very good of course because it weakens these um, two squares even further and now we see the knight hop into d4 and the other knight hop into f4 and this is really a dream situation for black here he's managed to get both knights to ideal squares um, without really being challenged too much b5 is a very effective move which basically removes away this c5 pawn because white was trying to get our plan in of knight c4 knight d6 but black says okay i'm just going to stop that with the move pawn to b5 and now you can't bring your knight to d6 anymore. I mean, you can take en passant, but then if you take en passant, I recapture back. The knight's guarding the c6 pawn, and yeah, you, you just can't bring that knight into d6, and there's no counterplay here for white. Whereas black has a huge attack on the king side, so now it starts switching the pieces towards the king side. This knight is just being a real thorn in white's position there's nothing white can do about it and then we just get a huge kingside attack so further supporting the knight with c5 just to make sure that there's no exchange sacrifices or anything like that and the knight comes back to the f4 square now to give checkmate and here we have the move rook takes h3 so after rook takes h3 we lead to a forced mate because bishop takes Queen takes, king across, and then uh, queen goes to g2. So we see all, all in all a very good you know, game for black, and it highlights a lot of the plans that um, are, are relevant in this particular case. Uh, another thing which wasn't played in this particular game, but we'll see sometimes, is you also want to push this f5 pawn. But in this particular game, um, f5 never really arose because uh, it quite weakened the king side quite a bit but in some situations it can be quite good to play this move okay let's have a look at an example from the white side and see how he should um, react okay let's let's get castles let's see knight to b7 again okay this time white plays move queen c2 c6 again Okay, this time white plays the move pawn to b4 straight away. Now, after the move pawn to b4, white is immediately going for this plan of pawn to c5, as we mentioned, and the knight is hopping across like this. Black should take advantage of the fact that white hasn't yet um, able to support the b pawn and should play pawn to a5 here. So this is a key move you should remember if you're playing from, let's say, the black side. Because in this position, he can't play a3. Because after a3, pawn takes, we see the rook is pinned along this a file. So instead, what white has to do is push the pawn forward to b5. But now, at least, black has some squares here to play. Play on c5 and so on. So the game could continue. Let's say rook e8, you could play queen c7. If white tries to play bishop a3, you could go bishop to f8. Let's say something like this. Exchange some pieces and black can maneuver around again on these dark squares. Maybe try to hop a knight again into e6 and, and so on. But since black has sort of forced these pawns to go to f4, to c4 and b5, um, he can sort of play around these squares a lot easier, easily. 
and I think black is doing okay here. Um, white's probably okay as well, but it's um, it's a much closer game. Whereas after the move pawn to b4, black played the move rook to e8, and now we have rook to d1. Knight to h5 was played in the game. White played g3, so slight difference here because white hasn't actually played h3. So he has the option of playing g3 just to cut out this square from black. And then game continues bishop to e3, bishop f8, pawn to a3. But now black is giving white time to really organize all his pieces to the squares he wants to, to go to. So a5 now, but now it's a bit too late because the pawn goes to c5. We have exchanges here. The knight does the maneuvering. It's trying to move into this d4 square but black is very cramped here knight a4 knight comes to e6 rook comes back we see that white has a lot more control over this d4 square than black does in this particular case knight to b6 and the pieces are a lot more active knight to b6 knight to g4 bishop drops back to c1 we have rook to d8 uh, bishop goes to b2 controlling this d4 square we have some captures here and then here black decides that his position is getting quite bad that he needs to create some counterplay and goes for this sacrifice on c5 which i don't think quite works but is quite interesting so he sacrifices the piece i think he gets a couple of pawns for it knight takes c8 knight takes but I don't think it's enough. It's enough here. It's knight takes e5, knight takes f2, queen b3 was played, knight takes e4, king g2. So there's a, there's a lot of pawns here for black, but I think white's pieces are just too strong. Especially with the bishop pair. Knight to g4. Defends against f2, opening up some dangerous ideas here along the diagonal so bishop f8 was played queen e3 queen h6 a very nice move here queen h6 idea being the mate here of course and if um black takes the queen then we have a nice fork which is what happened in the game we have a fork take the queen and in fact now black's pawn structure is damaged and white has the bishops as well against the knight so clearly white is just winning here and after the exchange it just happens to be the right queening square for the pawn as well so because of this i don't think there's any real chances for black to hold this position white is just a bit too fast to queen Yeah, and, and white goes on to win the rest of the game um, fairly comfortably. So, as you can see on this pawn structure, the plans are relatively simple for both sides. Black trying to maneuver for this square on d4, and white really trying to fight for uh, space on the queen side, as well as um, fighting for you know the d file and the d6 square by looking for some knight maneuvers or bishop maneuvers and active peace play so i hope you enjoyed this video found it useful and thanks for watching and i will see you all on the next one take care